Hello class, so good morning again. So in this lecture, we will be discussing general concepts and overview of the relevant costs for decision making. So this is also called as uh, short-term non-routine decisions. So again, making decisions is one of the basic functions no, of the manager. So to be successful, uh, managers must be able to tell the difference between relevant and irrelevant data and must be able to correctly use the relevant data in analyzing alternatives. So the purpose of this lecture is to develop the skills by illustrating our um, use in a wide range of decision-making situations. Okay, so um, the cost concepts for decision-making. So we already... Um, discussed in the previous lessons controllable and uncontrollable cost now in this lesson we will be uh, more oriented on determining or identifying which are relevant or irrelevant cost now what is a relevant cost a relevant cost is a cost that differs between alternatives okay so again it should be a cost that is um, different between alternatives so it should not be present in alternative one and also it should not be present in alternative two in that um, essence we call that a relevant cost relevant cost okay so now let's uh, proceed to identifying relevant cost so um, the, um, categorically, no, all avoidable costs no, are relevant costs. Those that we cannot avoid are irrelevant costs. Okay? So, if uh, something, if a cost can be eliminated no, totally or just partly by choosing one alternative over another, then that is a relevant cost. So there are two broad categories of cost that are never relevant in any decision and this include sunk cost, cost that we have already incurred in the past, and we have the future cost that do not differ between the alternatives. It is present in alternative 1 and it is also present in alternative 2. Okay, so self-check number one question. Future costs that do not differ among the alternatives are not relevant in a decision. True or false? So, let's have this two-step process in analyzing whether a cost is relevant or not. So, we have the first step. Eliminate costs and benefits that do not differ between alternatives. So, first look at the given if this cost <clears throat> or benefits in the form of savings do not differ. They are exactly the same amount and they are exactly present in two alternatives, then directly eliminate them. Step 2. Use the remaining costs and benefits that do differ between alternatives in making the decision so, these costs that remain are differential or avoidable costs. Okay, so there are um, costs that are relevant in one decision situation but may not be relevant in another context or in other situation. So, therefore, in each decision situation, the manager must examine the data at hand and isolate the relevant costs. Okay, so let's have a sample no, information. So let's assume this following information no, from Fatima, who is considering to visit her friend in Davao. No? So um, she is trying to decide whether it would be less expensive to drive or take the bus to the vow. So um, let's look at this um, information. No? Okay, so we have here 
first, we have this following information. So, by car, it takes 230 miles to her friend's apartment. Okay? So, we have the um, annual straight line depreciation on the car. So, it is calculated again, cost minus salvage value divided by useful life. Diba? That's how we compute straight line depreciation. So, we have the um, cost per mile okay, um, based on 10,000 miles driven per year. So, that's 2,800 divided by 10,000. So, that will give us 0.280 per mile. So, we have the cost of the gasoline. So, gasoline per mile is calculated by taking the price per gallon of the gasoline and dividing it by the number of miles per gallon of the car. Okay. So, let's have here 0 0.050. Next, we have the uh, parking fee at school. Okay, so um, Fatima attends school only eight months out of uh, one year. No, so the parking fee at school is forty-five um, per month. No, so forty-five per month. So multiply that by eight, so we get three sixty. Okay. So, you just divide it. So, we will get 0 0.036. Okay. So, we also have maintenance and repairs. And we also have annual cost of auto insurance and license. Okay. So, just divide that by 10,000. So, these are our data. Okay. So, again. So, these are the... Um, Costs. Okay, so again, um, the this is the depreciation. Okay, so the cost of gasoline was taken by dividing 1.6 divided by 32 miles per gallon. And what else? So this is the depreciation. So five years useful life and 4,000 um, residual value. So, some additional information here, round trip, ticket, reduction in resale value of car per mile of um, depreciation or wear, benefits and relaxing on the trip, cost of putting cut in the pet shop while gone, benefits of having car, hassle of parking car, and per day cost parking of car. Okay. Okay, so now which costs and benefits are relevant in her decision? So we have the cost of the car is irrelevant to the decision, like how much she initially bought the car because it is already a sunk cost. It is already a past cost. The annual cost of insurance is not again relevant because it does not differ between the alternatives because whether she drive the car or whether she take just take the bus she will still pay the annual cost of auto insurance so therefore it it did uh, it did, it does not differ next we have what is relevant here if the cost of the gasoline no that would be relevant because you will really not spend for that if you will take the bond. Self-check question. The book value of old car is not a relevant cost in a travel decision problem. True or false? Okay, so we have the cost of maintenance and repairs. So that is... Um, relevant because what you um, what you expect in the long run would depend on your miles driven. Diba? That's how we um, the cost of maintenance and repairs. So the monthly parking fee is not relevant because 
um, that should be paid whether you drive the car or take the bus because it's already um, the policy of the school, no? Parking fee. So we have um, the cost that we have computed a while ago of 0.569 are relevant and others are not. No? Some of that cost are relevant and some are not relevant. Self-check number four. Variable costs are always relevant costs. True or false? Okay, so the decline in resale value is relevant because it, um, it, it will be incurred with additional miles driven. The round-trip bus fare is relevant because that is avoidable, no? If she can just drive her car. Relaxing on the bus is relevant but difficult to quantify. The pet shop cost is not relevant because it is not a differential cost. Whether you take the bus or you just drive the car because you are not there, you are traveling, you really will. Um, incur the cost in the pet shop cost. Okay, so the cost of parking can be relevant. Cost of parking in Davao can be relevant because it can be avoided if she will not take the car and just ride the bus. The benefits of having a car in Davao and the problem finding a parking space are both relevant but again difficult to quantify. Okay, so from a uh, financial standpoint, she would be better off by taking the bus to visit her friend. But there are some of um, qualitative or non-financial factors that may influence her final decision. Because as you can see here, the relevant financial cost of driving, so we have the gasoline, Okay, so 460 because that's a round trip to 30 times 2. Okay, so just multiply that. So we have the maintenance. Okay, um, that's 230 round trip, 460 times the uh, maintenance per mile. Then the reduction in sale value because that would differ if you just drive. And the parking in the vow and that's 2 days, no? And 25 per day, that's 50. So total, we have 114.86. The relevant cost in taking the bus is just the round-trip ticket. The round-trip ticket is costing 104. So therefore, if she wanted to go with a uh, less expensive choice, then taking the bus is the best choice. Okay, so we have what we call here a total and differential cost approach. Okay, so um, the total approach requires actually constructing two contribution format income statement. So again, contribution format, no? We start with the sales variable less, variable expenses is equal to contribution margin. So per alternative, okay? So that's the total approach. So... The difference between the two income statements, no? the net income in decision one, the net income decision two, this is the differential benefit, the 12,000, for example, here. Okay, so that is the differential cost approach. The differential cost approach is focusing on analyzing only how, uh, how to obtain the 12,000. Okay, so as you can see, we have here the total and the differential cost approach. So for the total cost, can you refer here? So we have the sales, we compute, and then we deduct the 
uh, variable expenses, so we have direct materials, direct labor, and variable overhead. Okay, so we get the total variable expenses to be deducted from the sales. Then we get the contribution margin. Then we less the fixed expenses. No, so we have the net operating income, and the current situation where we do not um, rent a new machine versus the situation with a new machine here. No, so this will be additional rent on the new machine of three thousand. Okay, so we will have 30,000. Okay, so um, we have here the difference of 12,000. Okay, so we have here the differential cost approach. So just by picking what really differs. Okay, so we look at the decrease in the direct labor cost because we'll be renting a new machine and that would replace our human um, force, our labor force. So that would be a reduction of three per unit. So that's 15,000. Then the increase in the fixed rental expenses for the new machine of 3,000. So therefore, we have an annual cost saving from renting the new machine of 12,000. So this here on the left side is the differential cost approach and this is much easier no? um, when we are talking about time orientation because you will just be picking the what really matters. For the uh, total approach, this is quite lengthy but you will not make any mistakes here no? because you will just follow the format. No? So, um, if you have time, you can do this for the checking, but if you are concerned with the limited time, just stick to the differential cost approach. Self-check number three. Only the variable costs identified with a product are relevant in a decision concerning whether to eliminate the product. True or false? Okay, so we have the advantages of using differential approach here. So um, sometimes it there is no um, adequate information so that we can prepare a detailed income statement for both alternatives. So therefore, the total approach cannot be um, cannot be done. No. So the second is when you mingle, no, when you confuse irrelevant with relevant cost, um, that could distract then our uh, focus no from the given that is really critical okay so um, it depends no um if um the total approach is focusing both on relevant and irrelevant cost because it is preparing the total no so it can cause confusion to the examiners examinees and um you could lose a uh, focus no okay so that's why differential approach is um, better because of these two reasons so okay so thank you for watching and studying so next lesson coming up relevant costing decision situations on um, relevant costing.